I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Tonight it's all about aftermarket parts and accessories as well as answering all your car questions. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC, that's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is John Raymond, he's an industry consultant and APA advisor, and Tom Dunn, he's in specialty sales and marketing. We'll also be taking your calls this evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Great to be back. It's been a year. Hi, John. Always great to be here. Good to see you each yeah. week. APA News, anything off the top yeah, you need to know? Yeah, we have some actually uh, very encouraging news, and that is uh, revolving around this program. And we've noticed that each week we're getting more and more calls. After the show, people either are asking for me that's because I tell them to call that's John. That's right. I want t-shirts made that just say, Ask John. I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> that's because but, of your magnetism. Yes, that's it. But what's really encouraging is there's a, now a connection of the show with what we do in our offices to help motorists every day. And last week we had our insurance program, mm -hmm. and we had some great uh, callers in that said, I saw the show, and I need help, or what do you think about this? And we had another caller in uh, about a technical question that uh, Chris was dealing with, and I found a shop for the people, and the people were happy, and that's really what this show is about. It's about helping uh, motors in Ontario. I'm glad to hear it, because I know doing what I do in my side of the industry, there's a gap, and that's between consumers and viewers and readers and access to the parts of the industry that are sometimes mysterious or scary or something. Right. And I know the APA steps into that gap and it's really cool that viewers are putting that together with what we do on the show. And I have to admit, at least once a week, I know I look over to you on the couch and just say, ask John, I give up. I don't know what the it's answer is to scary. that question. So that's cool though. So I guess you know. our message is, is bring it on. We're very excited and we're happy to be there to help. I just hope in the morning it's not, John doesn't work here anymore. <laughs> We've no, stirred up all the happen. dust. No. And but. Tom, it's great that you're here. To, this week we're talking about brakes, which in the industry is called friction. Absolutely. And um, shock absorbers and things of that nature, which is ride control. Tom is um, an expert in the field that I've worked with. and. Uh, and he's the most knowledgeable person I know in the aftermarket, which are actually the sale of parts after your car goes off for warranty. Well, it's a good time of year, too, to be getting into brakes and shock absorbers when I'm looking at potholes. Yeah, yeah thank you. Everyone, yeah. You know, <laughs> you'll be busy with Chris Muir, I could assure you. Oh, yeah, that's going to be really interesting when Chris gets out here. Yeah. So. <laughs> the APA still car buying service, used cars, new cars. Can you just do like a quick rundown on everything that's available on that site? Every, on our reviews. website? Yeah, there's reviews so the for The website people. is the APA.ca. Mm -hmm. um, there's a member only site to, if you'd like to join the APA. There's a, a member fee, a yearly fee, and it opens the site up for a, a variety of other uses, including the buying service. Well worth it. But, well worth it, yeah. but we have car reviews. Mm -hmm. um, we have certified garages. We have information on insurance, uh, insurance broker once you become a member to save you time, money and offer good advice who we actually have on Debbie. We have twice a year the and timely events uh, in terms of snow tire reviews and winter seasonal tire items. Reviews? Yeah. Winter tire reviews, exactly. We're retraining ourselves. With I know the, it's really hard at our age, <laughs> uh, my age I should say. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can say, you can say our age, yeah. that's fine. One thing, when we talk about recommended mechanics, and we have some of them on the show, Chris is on all the time because we can always find Chris. Um, I've sent people, and I've actually gotten to know some of the mechanics, and I've sent people in the area to it. You guys actually go in and vet the mechanics. You know who they are before you're recommending them. That's a big deal because We, it's, we vet the shop. Yeah. We meet the technicians. We also ensure that they're up on their training levels, equipment, and... Um, the type of work they do because not all shops do all types of work mm -hmm. or work on all types of cars. Mm -hmm. Often somebody wants a shop within their geographic area, it makes sense. So we have a number of shops primarily in the GTA, um, some outside of the GTA that we could recommend. And uh, yeah, I recommend my guys that I've been going to for 20 years. <laughs> There, good. I'm going to move this over to aftermarket a little bit because after the break we're going to come back with some show and tell stuff. Terrific. But you deal with do you deal with dealers? Do you deal with um I deal with everyone. I deal with, with, with the aftermarket uh, service, service providers. I deal with dealerships. I deal with pretty much everyone that replaces a part in Canada. 
Now, the dealerships, I, a lot of people would think if it's a GM dealership, they only deal in GM parts. Is there an overlap between aftermarket parts Absolutely. and OEM stuff? And what There's is a lot of fulfillment going on where dealerships will, will come to us in the aftermarket to fulfill their needs because, I mean, they're, they're usually fairly stringent in terms of the depth and breadth of what they offer, mm -hmm. and anything outside of that, they come to us. For, for parts, so we do a lot of business with the OE dealerships. Okay, I'm going to ask you something. This is your opinion, because I know this isn't specific to what you do, but we've seen an ongoing nightmare with the Takata airbags, which have all had to be recalled, millions and millions of them, mm -hmm. and they can't replace them. Now, is that considered an aftermarket part? No, it's no. not, so that's stock in the cars. But replacing them, does that make it an aftermarket part? Is there something to replace it that is an aftermarket part? That's I'm getting a lot actually, of mail saying, what do I do? I'm scared to drive my car. That's actually a category that doesn't lend itself to the aftermarket. Okay. We have aftermarket players like Delphi, mm -hmm. um, who are huge manufacturers of that product. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't offer that in the aftermarket. So, so things specific to that type of category, we don't really deal Those with. Those would go through a dealer in, channel. In the aftermarket. They wouldn't would go in the aftermarket. Primarily dealer. Okay. <clears throat> We're just, I'm getting a lot of questions about that because they can't get their, literally, they can't get their hands on replacement stuff, and a lot of people are scared to drive their cars, and they don't know what to do, but that is a dealer mm, problem, absolutely. manufacturer problem. And, and that may be also model specific. Where in the aftermarket, may, a part may fit a range of products, mm -hmm. but uh, airbag controllers, things like that, they're designed for the effective use in that vehicle in terms of crash technology. And, and we're not seeing a lot of movement on that airbag replacement. They can't keep up, and they flat out said we can't keep up. And they're replacing high moisture areas first, high humidity. We're also not seeing much from Volkswagen. They came out with a notice about a week ago, but I still haven't seen any. End of March. Any. The big day is either the 23rd or the 24th what, what of March. What do you think we're going to see from Volkswagen? We're going to see um, trying to make a cash settlement. That all eyes Within are on them, trying to say that, you know what, let's buy ourselves out of this problem and get a waiver to, on think? those cars. Here's Mark. another opinion. Do you think they're going to be able to? That's a lot of money. No. I don't think I they think are I think at either. the end of the day, they're going to have to buy back some of their cars. Yeah. And they're going to, they'll definitely put the recall into some of their cars. Mm -hmm. But some of the cars they'll probably have to buy back and they'll have to pay hefty fines. And I think their reputation's taking a hit that the longer they stayed silent and fumbled the the PR ball on this. Oh, absolutely. The mix, they waited too long yeah. already. And the yeah. mixed but messages. But they'll emerge. They'll emerge. Intact? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It may take years. Yeah. I mean, they're still a monster company. I mean, yeah. VW are one of the largest, if not, I mean, we, we all hear largest. about Toyota being taken over GM. VW are, I believe, the largest they are the biggest. Yeah. manufacturer on the And I mean, what do we need to say about German engineering? I mean, well, apparently a little more. Engineering, <laughs> that's right. I mean, they will emerge yeah. just fine. So Volkswagen just will come cars. back. Yeah. Um, they will come back as a different entity. I okay. think they've, their reputation is tarnished. Well, I it's feel like their rush to be number one, maybe they compromised. Like maybe in the push to have that crown, which is tarnished. But they this started six, ten years ago. Yeah, These problems know. started in 06, maybe even before. Think anyone go to jail? I don't. And we all feel sorry for the owners that are driving the product. And the retailers. Owners, I feel well, so bad for the retailers. this was more a disclosure issue than it was, I mean, I thought it was a lying issue. Well, it was. It was, uh, it was all about disclosure because the issue really at hand was nothing that no one else doesn't do. It really wasn't that huge of a faux pas, actually. It was about disclosure, and they didn't come to the table. Their numbers and were they wrong, would... and the other ones were right enough. Yeah. I no, think there's a bigger gap. And actually, there they... was because you can't tell the public that you have a clean diesel yeah. and you're better the environment than the next guy. Yeah. And then you find out that you're emitting 40 cheating. times the pollutants yeah. by cheating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a little let down by VW and the way they haven't stepped up to handle it. I mean, I was so bad. Be I was so busy being mad at GM for their ignitions, and then VW came along and kind of pushed that aside a little bit. So I'm sure till the next. Um, and what we don't realize is for journalists or people in the industry, such as myself, We've recommended yes. uh, diesels to a number of our friends, our neighbors, For our years, yeah. doctors, our accountants. I wrote and an we're apology caught in column. The middle. Yeah. I wrote a column and said, I'm sorry. And someone goes, well, it's not really your fault. You were told all this. And their engineers, their dealers, their PR people, everybody, we all got 
lied to, and I feel terrible for the people that have that much invested in it. And what are we going to do? Oh, yeah. But yeah, I wrote sorry because I felt like you, bad, mm -hmm. that we had been encouraging people to put this on their list. Yeah. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 800-968-7836.